Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, everyone. So this battle, it's been about a month. Uh, it's not called a battle, it's called a war. This war has been about a month in, and I've made a video about a month ago when the battle started that Israel is going to lose. Israel has no chance of winning. And a lot of people didn't like that video. <laughs> and a lot of people said, oh, you know what, you're crazy. There's no way Israel's going to lose. They have the whole world, all this power, blah, blah, blah. And uh, I think that's a big myth, and it needs to be dispelled, and we're going to dispel it even more today. The tank versus uh, Palestinian resistance fighters. So clearly there's a strategy here with the Palestinian resistance fighters. If you look at this video here, this is a very famous video. Here. running out of the tunnel he places a explosive on the side of the tank runs back it detonates and then he takes out his rocket launcher and shoots the tank right so what you have to understand is that where he's putting that explosive is on the active protection system of the tank so um, Israeli tanks and most modern tanks right have an active protection system where they detect any incoming missiles and then they fire their own explosion at the uh, missile to blow it up before it can hit the tank so he blew up that active protection system called the trophy system. He blew it up on the tank first, and then he took out his rocket launcher and blew that up. And we can see that Palestinian resistance fighters have studied how these tanks uh, operate and their weak points. And we can see some training videos that they've uploaded where they uh, specifically target weak points in the tank, such as the storage depot and so forth. But let's take a look at the tactics, right? So generally speaking, in all of the tank videos that came out, it's undeniable that there were no infantry protecting the tanks. And this is the weak point that I want to point to about the IDF and the Israeli army. Tanks are not supposed to do the heavy lifting of doing everything for a battle. They're not supposed to fight the whole battle for you. You're supposed to, as, a, as an army, go in with your tank like you're a soldier. You have your tank with you. You're watching the tank's back. The tank is watching your back. You can hide behind the tank for cover when you need to. And if someone like a Palestinian resistance fighter wants to shoot at the tank, you have eyes and ears around the tank, guarding the tank and shooting the guy before he can hit your tank. The tank can't just rely on the technology and it has blind spots, even with its thermal uh, detection systems and its other systems to detect, it can't detect everything, right? So we see this over-reliance of technology that Israeli soldiers have which makes them vulnerable to these kind of attacks. The second thing is we also see that even the Israeli tanks themselves are huddled up together across the border, which makes them an easy target for uh, drone strikes and so forth, as well as Israeli soldiers themselves all huddled up together and not spread out the way they're supposed to. Spreading out so that you don't get hit. And we see that Israelis don't do that. Their tanks don't do that even. They're, they're all huddled up together. So uh, we this is further reinforced by the Ukraine war, where in Ukraine drones would strike uh, huddled up together targets and have more and do more damage than if the targets were spread out. Next is the IDF unwillingness to simply go into the tunnels, right? So what they've been doing so far is that they've been trying to, whenever they find a tunnel, they've been kind of blowing it up from the surface but not going in, which doesn't really do anything because the tunnels underneath Gaza is called the metro and it's hundreds of miles long, crisscross like a spider. So Netanyahu says that he wants to use bunker busters. Bunker busters go about 100 feet deep. Some of the Palestinian resistance fighters' tunnels are about 80 to 100 feet deep. The others, some others are about, the deepest one that was found was 230 feet deep, which is way uh, more down than what a bunker buster can penetrate. So even if they try and 
you take out the tunnels this way, it's not really going to work. They're not going to take out all the tunnels in this way. The Palestinian resistance will still be able to survive and make more weapons because they have their uh, weapons depots underneath the tunnels. And it's important to understand that the tunnel system has been perfected at this point. So Egypt in uh, 2007 flooded the tunnels from the Gaza-Egypt border with sewage water. And the Palestinian people had to clean it out and take out the refuse and rebuild their tunnels. Uh, Israeli uh, Air Force in uh, 2021 in Operation Guardian of the Walls used AI to try and map the tunnels out. So they used AI to see where the fighters were popping out from. And then they tried to use that information and AI to kind of map out where the tunnels could be. But that still didn't eliminate the tunnels. And even throughout all of these attacks, they were still able to smuggle the weapons and smuggle the goods that they needed into Gaza. So the tunnels were still working fixed and better than ever. The tunnel system is the Palestinian resistance main asset, whereas the Air Force is Israel's main asset. And they cancel each other out. And Israel also has a lot of funding, right? But keep in mind that one Merkava tank costs about three and a half million, and some estimates say it costs about six million dollars to produce, whereas the Yassin 105 rockets that have been used to take out these tanks cost only a couple hundred dollars, and they're made in these underground factories that we talked about that are in the tunnel system. So again, the idea of Israeli superior technology is canceled out with the cheap, effective technology that uh, Palestinian resistance has access to. So now it goes down to the man, right? What can the man do? Because that's what it comes down to when fighting a war, right? So we've seen that Palestinian resistance has the nerve, has the steel to charge tanks and place explosives on the tanks in their weak spots and run back and fire at their weak spots. This takes a lot of testicular fortitude to do correctly. Even if you know where the weak spot is, you might not charge it and you might not uh, pull it off. Popping out and shooting rockets in close range at these tanks and taking them out. So contrast that to what the IDF is doing. The IDF is refusing to engage, refusing to leave their tanks, right? Tank with no infantry guarding it is a sitting duck, right? And their response to this, you can't tech your way out of these solutions. The resp Israeli response to this is to release the Merkava 5, which is even more uh, updated than the Merkava 4 that's being used. But you can't just ignore the fact that every single one of these videos shows that there was no infantry in sight, no soldiers in sight. So whether it was soldiers refusing to protect their tanks, soldiers refusing to go into the tunnels, or soldiers refusing to even save their hostages on October 7th. On October 7th, afterwards, reports came out that uh, Israeli uh, soldiers and units were firing on the hostages with the Palestinian resistance fighters that captured those hostages to just kill them all, right? And this is actually something called the Hannibal Directive, which is actually part of Israeli doctrine, that if uh, a hostage is captured, then it is okay to just kill the capture and kill the hostage. And... I think when we look at the pattern, we see that there's a, an unwillingness to engage, a refusal to engage. And to the point that Israeli army, the IDF, has been labeled as casualty averse, right? Now, people who don't like Israel will call them cowards. People who like Israel will say, oh, no, no, they're just casualty averse. They have to be because the Jewish people are of a smaller demographic. So by nature, they have to act in this way. Whatever you choose or whatever you decide, that is up to you. Uh, I, for one believe that the definition of a warrior, according to Matt Larson, who was the combatives program director in the United States Mil uh, Army, said that the definition of a warrior is a willingness to close in with the enemy. So a battle, a war cannot be won if those people fighting it are not warriors. So Israel is refusing your refusal to enter the tunnels and refusal to engage with their enemies has meant that they've already lost this war.